Welcome to Let's Talk About Life with Alan Weinstein, author of Memoirs of a Learning Disabled, Dyslexic, Multimillionaire, and me, his daughter Sherry. Each episode, we will touch on topics such as how to use your mind to achieve goals, overcome obstacles, and give insights on how to reach one's fullest potential. Hi, I am Alan Weinstein, and I'm here with my daughter, Sherry. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and today's episode will be dealing with failure. So in your earlier years, when you were in school and everything, you had a lot of failures. How did you deal with that? Well, let, let me start one thing. I didn't know I was having failures. <laughs> well, I guess that's how you dealt with it then. <laughs> if you don't know you're having them. <laughs> it's, it's strange when people ask me that question. I, it, I try to remember back. I was never down on myself. Um, I never felt secondary to anybody, but I did feel insecure. Uh, I know those two kind of sounds funny, but I would never allow myself to feel inferior. Let me, let me put it that way. I didn't know failure from success. Right. But, but I do want to make one point from today's Allen, not from yesterday's Allen. Okay. There is no such thing as failure. Although I use it to explain so the people understand, but I believe failure is a really, the other side of failure is a learning experience. Absolutely. The only time you fail is when you say you fail. If you say you fail, you failed. Until then, you never fail. So, dealing in the younger ages, I didn't know failure from success. I just dealt with everything on an individual, one-by-one basis. However, there are all kinds of failure, quote, setbacks. To me, a failure is a setback. Okay. Like I said, unless I say it's a failure. The biggest failure setback (laughs) came in the 70s, 1974. Oh, and I remember that. I remember living through that. I remember how my life changed drastically. Didn't understand it. I think I was about nine years old. But the things that stuck out in my mind about that were I could no longer go to camp. Um, We weren't going to the country club. Um, I remember actually doing school shopping. And we used to get new clothing for the beginning of the year. And I remember mom saying to me, this year you're going to have to wear your pants from last year. And... Believe it or not, that was the year they decided bell-bottoms were no longer in style. (laughs) And I will never forget my rust-colored corduroy bell-bottoms that I had to wear that were too short. (laughs) But you endured. I I did. I don't think that... Okay. Yeah, I I just don't think that, you know, I was young. So I had no choice. I accepted it. So what happened? Yes, what happened? (laughs) From the time that I built this 125 houses development, which is what I spoke about in my last episode, to the 1974s, I became very successful. Uh, I I purchased a lot of properties, all syndicated. People had a lot of confidence in me, and they were putting up a lot of money for me to buy properties. I had a very good reputation. 1974, I began to build the Henry Floyd Plantation in Savannah, Georgia. I was going to build a golf course, the First Ladies PGA. I was building a project in Suffolk County called Artist Lake. It still exists today. And the Villas of Nassau in Plainview on Old Country Road in Long Island. And they still exist today. And they still exist today. I get a call from the Franklin National Bank, which today is not in existence anymore. And they were one of the biggest lenders to the real estate developers on Long Island. They called me in and they said they would like to get into some situations, real estate situations, with me. And the deal is they would back me 100%. So heretofore, If I bought a project, what I would have to do is I would have to put up the front money 
and go for a building loan. But in this case, they would put up all the money. All I would have to do is sign personally for it because they didn't want me to get up one day and say, well, I got no money in that project. I'm going to leave. Right. So they held me to my standard. Now, I get in bed with them and we start to continue to build these developments and I'm doing very well. But each time I take money from them, I have to sign personally. Right. And at this point, I'm up to $13,800,000 that I personally signed for. But that's no problem because I'm doing hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of work and I'm going to make all that money back and be able to pay the bank back. Right. No problem. Right. I come home Sunday night from the country club and my kids, my wife, go to bed, a multimillionaire. I had uh, over a million dollars at that time in, this, in the uh, Franklin National Bank. You're not going to believe this. You could check back 1973-4. The interest rate was 7.1%. What? Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. unheard of. <laughs> I had a million dollars in there earning that kind of money. I wake up on that Sunday night. I wake up Monday morning, sit down in the kitchen to have breakfast, open up the newspaper, Franklin National Bank out of business. <gasps> How can that be? Right. I saw them on Friday. They gave me money. This is Monday. They're closed. I put on every television in the house. Bank is closed, out of business. I remember that. Oh, God. I, I remember crazy. you. I just, I remember that morning like it was yesterday. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I, I made f phone calls and no bank was answering. Nobody was answering my phones. and I was going crazy. Well, the fact is they were out of business. What happened is for the next three days, I couldn't leave the house. I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't sleep. I remember we and, weren't allowed to talk to you. Oh, I, <laughs> mommy, <I'm, laughs> mommy forbid it. She's like, leave daddy alone. He's going through a really rough time right now. And so things were not good. Right. So on the fourth morning, I get up at six o'clock in the morning. And my wife says, where are you going? I said, I'm going to jog, run. She says, you don't run. I said, now I do. So I got to the track and I'm running around the track. And there's a gentleman in front of me. And there's another person sitting in a wheelchair and as the person in front of me passes the gentleman in a wheelchair he waves and i said to myself as i see this individual in the wheelchair could be a lot worse alan it's only money so from that day on i decided i was going to come back bigger and stronger than ever. So, although some people may consider that to be a failure, I consider that to be a temporary setback. And as a temporary setback, I worked very hard and came out better than I ever was. Took a lot of years, but I achieved more than I had previously. Again, Imagery and self-determination. Right, you never gave up. I never gave up. No. Well, for four days you did, but that, that was your, I guess, you had to need, needed that time to recollect your thoughts and to re reboot, well, yeah, kind of like a computer. I don't, I don't think three days when you're losing, oh, by the way, when you're losing $13,800,000 and just on it personally, I don't think three days is such a big No, <laughs> no, not at all. I mean, most, I mean, you had a lot of friends, I remember you telling me, that didn't make it through that. They, oh, some right. of them committed suicide, you know. Unfortunately, yes. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you it's were. It's a tough time. Yeah. It's a tough time. And just to throw something else in there, we really got taken by our own government in that deal. Right. But, uh, we'll that's talk about that's it. for another, we'll talk about another day. Another <laughs> so, uh, Sherry and I would like to thank you for tuning in today. Thank you. And for more, thank you. <laughs> and for more information uh, about me and uh, things I've done, please visit my website 
alanweinstein.com. That's Alan, A-L-L-E-N. And thank you. You're welcome. You have been tuned in to Let's Talk About Life with Alan Weinstein, author of Memoirs of a Learning Disabled Dyslexic Multimillionaire, and me, his daughter, Sherry. For more daily inspiration, follow Alan Weinstein on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Have a question you want Alan to answer? Send him an email at askalan at alanweinstein.com. That's Alan, A-L-L-E. 